Earlier this year, Anycubic released the Photon Ultra, a resin 3D printer using DLP technology, which as far as I know is the first real budget DLP option out there on the market. Unlike other desktop resin printers that use LCD screens to display an image that makes up each layer of the print, DLP or digital light processing uses an array of individually addressable micro mirrors to project the image through a piece of glass that cures each layer. The use of this technology has some serious benefits over the traditional MSLA, both in quality as well as life expectancy. A few months ago, Anycubic released their second DLP printer called the D2. Anycubic sent this printer over to me for testing and over the last two months, I've had time to sort of poke at it and put it through its paces. So in today's video, we will cover the specs of the D2. We'll go over what the unboxing and setup process was like. Of course, we'll take a look at how it prints and I will give you my thoughts based off of my experience so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before we jump into today's video, I did want to mention that we have officially got ModBot hats per popular demand. We've got a couple of different options. This is the more bold ModBot one, and there's one that's a little bit more discreet, as well as a couple of beanie options as well. So if maybe Patreon's not for you, but you've been wanting to support the channel and you like wearing hats, that is a really cool way that you can do so. And I will have links down below in the description over to the store. Starting off like we typically do, let's first run through the specs. As mentioned, the Anycubic D2 is a DLP based resin printer with a build volume of 131 by 73 by 165 millimeters. The projector has a resolution of 2560 by 1440, giving you an XY resolution of 51 microns. This is fairly similar to the XY resolution of other similar sized resin printers on the market. However, because the D2 is using that DLP technology, you'll get crisper prints, which we'll cover a little bit later on. The D2 bed is made of aluminum that has a steep slant on the top to prevent resin from pooling on the plate, and Anycubic uses their laser etched bed surface for adhesion. One of the resins I used had absolutely insane adhesion compared to the other ones on that build plate, which caused a ton of gashes and scratches when removing the prints from the build plate. But this is the same laser etched surface used on a lot of Anycubic's other resin printers that I'm quite familiar with, and the adhesion has always been really solid with it. The bed rides up and down on a single lead screw and linear rail, and the printer comes with a plastic vat. I'm indifferent about aluminum versus plastic vats. The plus side of having a plastic vat is that usually the replacements are much more inexpensive. So if you want to be able to quickly swap out resins, you can pick up a couple of additional vats. There are resin levels on the vat, which is always nice to see. Interfacing with the D2 is done via the 2.8 inch touchscreen on the front, which like most resin printers is easy to use and primarily used to start and stop your prints. The right side of the machine has a power rocker switch and USB port for printing from a flash drive and the back of the machine has an exhaust and power input jack. Looking at the printer from the outside, it pretty much looks like any other resin 3D printer that Anycubic has put out, with the main defining difference being that you get this neat blue acrylic top versus their traditional yellow. Looks can be deceiving though, and looking beyond the vat through the glass into the projector is where all of the magic happens. This is what makes this printer quite different than any other resin 3D printer we've covered on this channel. Unlike a fairly simple mask that is created with the LCD screen on MSLA printers, DLP technology is able to project the light off of its array of millions of micro mirrors that are individually addressable, which practically eliminates light bleed, which can blur details on MSLA printers. The result is incredibly high detailed, crisp prints. If you're interested in learning more about the technology behind DLP and how this science magic works, Zach Friedman from Voidstar Lab did an incredible breakdown of it that I highly recommend watching. Links will be in the description over to his video. The D2 was fully unboxed and set up on live stream over on the ModBot Army channel. And the good news is that there are no additional steps with setting up the D2 from any other resin printer. The process is attaching the build plate, loosening the screws, dropping it down onto the glass with a piece of paper between the build plate and the glass, tightening the screws, and you are ready to print. On stream, we ended up pouring in some clear resin from J.O. and running the pre-sliced test print, which did end up failing. Anycubic did release a resin specific for 
for DLP and their DLP printers, but because MSLA and DLP are both using the same UV wavelength, I was hoping I was going to be able to get the LCD resins working with the D2. It did take a couple of tries for me to dial in the resin, but I am happy to confirm that LCD resins, if you already have some or if you just want to get them because they're going to be less expensive than the DLP, will work fine on the Anycubic D2. I think the main issue more so than LCD versus DLP resin was that the pre-sliced model on here was sliced for a more opaque resin and with the resin being clear that I used, the UV light was able to shine past it a little bit more. So I had to increase the layer cure time ever so slightly to get the clear resin to cure, which is pretty standard. It's the same way if you printed with it on an LCD printer, typically clear resins require a slightly different cure time. For the slicer, Anycubic recommends using their Photon Workshop. The slicer has gotten better over the years, but I'm still not crazy about it compared to something like Chitubox or Lychee. At the time I started testing the machine a couple of months ago, Chitubox did have a profile available for the D2, and since then, Lychee has also added it. So the good news is, is that you have a wide range of slicers that you can use with the D2, depending on what your personal preference is. While I was testing out the clear JO resin on the D2, I did end up putting in an order for the Anycubic Craftsman DLP specific resin. This resin is quite similar to traditional LCD resin, but they added a ceramic powder which helps with the curing. This resin is definitely a bit more than some of the lower priced resins I've used, but it does print insanely well on the D2. If you are new to resin 3D printing and end up getting the D2, I highly recommend at least picking up one bottle of that Craftsman resin so that you can Get familiar with the machine, it just prints so easily before trying any of the other maybe LCD resins out there. With this resin, I printed out a few miniatures from One Page Rules, and no exaggeration, I think that they are the best minis I have ever printed. The detail is mad, and they are very easy to print. There are a lot of people using resin printers to print small figures for tabletop gaming, and if that is your goal, you will definitely not be disappointed with the quality output of the D2. I followed this up with the Ice Dragon, from Photos Mint, a Goofy model from Chaos Cortec, and the Zen Balloon Animal also from Chaos Cortec. Each of these printed beautifully and are buttery smooth. The detail in the Photos Mint Dragon is absolutely incredible, and the Goofy model is definitely a favorite around the house right now. About a month ago, my buddy and awesome community member Carl Fenton let me know that he had been testing out a very unique dual colored resin and asked if I'd be interested in testing it out. He put me in contact with the manufacturer Yusu and they sent me a bottle of their Nebula orange and pink resin to test out. After running through a bottle of it, I can say that this is one of the most unique resins I've ever printed with and it is excellent for making just crazy, unique looking prints. The resin is a bit thinner than what I'm used to, which actually is a huge plus because I've been printing in the garage and it's been very cold. And as it gets colder, the viscosity of the resin can become an issue, but I had no problem printing with the Yusu resin. I poured the resin in, sliced up a few Halloween Pokemon models from Chaos Cortec and ran the print. Nothing needs to be done special as far as prep for this resin or slicing. However, the Parts stuck so well to the build plate that it was actually problematic. That is why I have some serious gashes on this build plate now, and I'm sure that if I maybe tweaked some of the settings, I could get it to release a bit easier, or if I adjusted and made the gap even a bit um, wider between the FEP and the first layer on the build plate. However, the long-term goal is going to be to throw a Wham Bam Flex plate on here. It's something I highly recommend for anybody really that's resin printing. It makes it so much nicer to just get your print off and flex it like you would with an FFF or extrusion based printer. And so that's what the long-term plan is going to be for the D2 as well. The resin itself though was absolutely beautiful and created some very unique prints. The thicker parts have a darker pink purple and the thinner parts have an orange tone to them. I quickly discovered that thanks to sort of the translucency of this resin that if you put a light underneath them and allow it to shine through, it looks absolutely beautiful and helps to highlight a lot of those unique colors and just details in the, in the prints. I followed this up with a couple prints of two different dragons from Photos Mint, which also printed beautifully. If you're looking for a cool resin to make gifts or just unique parts for yourself, it is worth picking up a bottle of this resin and I will have the links in the description below where you can do so. Using the D2 these past couple of months has been an absolute treat and I dare say that this 
very well may be currently my favorite smaller form factor desktop resin 3D printer that's out there. Due to the DLP technology being used, you're able to get much crisper prints than you can get with an MSLA printer, and you also get a substantially higher lifespan compared to the LCD screens that are used on any of the MSLA printers. For anyone not familiar with resin 3D printing and how it typically works, you have a LCD screen that displays essentially a negative image that the light is able to then pass through, and it displays each and every image for each layer as it cures the resin. But while the UV is shining through the LCD screen, it's actually degrading the screen. And so your typical monochromatic LCD screen, which is what's most commonly used, gets on average 2,000-ish hours before you need to replace it. And the price point can be anywhere from like $50, $60 for a small one to 100 or even hundreds in some case for the larger machines. While this, because you're not using an LCD screen, it's just a pane of glass and the projector, Anycubic is stating that the projector is rated at 20,000 hours, which is insane. And I did the math. If you ran it every single day, nonstop, 24 hours a day, at the two year mark, you would still have plenty of life to go on this, which is just nuts. On top of that, and the reason why this is able to get crisper prints is that when the LCD screen is basically making those masks in the MSLA technology, some of the UV light is still able to shine through and that's how you get sort of blurring or softening around some of the crisp edges. While with this, because it's using the micro mirrors that are very able to precisely either allow the light to pass or just not send the light through the projector and the mirror, you don't get any of that light bleeding. As far as the hardware goes, I don't really have any complaints. A, a filter system of sorts would be nice. Um, the An exhaust port on the back like we've seen on the Saturn II recently, if you do want to run a extractor to get rid of the fumes would also be a nice thing. And I know that some do not uh, like plastic vats compared to aluminum. I've never had issues with them. And like I said, the cost is less to replace them, but that might be something that people, some might not be crazy about. Really the main reason I see someone going with a different resin printer than this one based off what it can do really comes down to cost. As of right now, the D2 is going for around $680 which is about three times more expensive than similar sized MSLA resin printers on the market. Granted, you won't need to be swapping out the LCD screens and it will just be hands off for a longer extent of time, but it still is a pretty big jump in price. I've mentioned before that even some of the lower resolution LCD resin printers out there are able to produce beautiful prints and I absolutely still stand by that. Although I do feel the D2 can produce crisper prints than other units I've tested, it really comes down to how valuable that is to you. If you have the budget or are using your resin 3D printer for a business and you want the highest possible resolution, you will not be disappointed with the D2. However, if you're looking to get your first resin 3D printer, need something bigger, or are just on a budget, lots of the other MSLA resin 3D printers on the market will be fantastic choices and also able to produce just stunning results. And that has been the Anycubic D2. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I personally think it's super exciting that we're seeing DLP technology trickle down into the more hobbyist budget space Prior to the D2 and the Anycubic Ultra, the only DLP resin printers I'm familiar with were 4,000-ish or many thousands of dollars and primarily used in medical as well as the dental industry. So to see this at the price point it's at is absolutely insane and I anticipate it's only a matter of time before we start to see other options become available as well. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.